Bill Trost had asked me to write up something for Canark. So I, I wrote everything up and it just, it went in a drawer that wasn't a launch continent. And then uh, with the uh, success of EverQuest, suddenly we were like, hey, we, we need more content. So Canark was floored out and it had all the major players detailed. So we rolled with it. Okay, so you're telling me you wrote this up beforehand, it sat in a drawer? Our yeah. our most beloved expansion sat in a drawer for a year. What? Mm. Yeah, and what people don't know is all of that uh, material that I came up with was from various role playing campaigns that I had run, uh, you know, in my youth, probably in high school or something. So I had it sort of an amalgamation of different campaign worlds from different systems that I ran because I wasn't just running. D and D was running Rollmaster and uh, GURPS and other other systems. Right on. And the uh, I think the most important thing that I wanted to do with that uh, continent was to provide a level of darkness or a little bit more of a serious tone than sort of EverQuest had uh, currently. Right, it was right. it was a lighter, more heroic sort of uh, sort of offering. I wanted to give players a chance to play another evil race, and um, also to to have this fallen empire and ancient runes and ancient magic and necromancy. I felt like that all coming together with some nice uh, uh, sort of uh, evil masterminds like uh, Venral sat there mm -hmm. would would give us a good basis for making really great content um, so that's that was sort of my approach and after writing it it just sat in a drawer for a year or so and then it, it got pulled out and then we started using it in earnest um, I had written maybe a 5,000 year history or something of the of the continent and then detailed the major players or actors and sort of their relationship with each other and then the major uh interesting pois or places of interest so sites mm -hmm. that could be explored like subalis or any of the other uh, the over there etc right and after writing all that up and sort of what the plots and subplots were and who didn't like who and who liked who and who was going to be betray who uh then all of that was was design took it and ran with it and then right. they filled in all the missing spots so that i didn't address any of the micro details stuff they didn't like they altered right right <laughs> that's so crazy yeah not to fanboy too much but as you're describing it it's like goosebumps uh, we did already... you work closely with the artists who implemented the zones or was that handled by other folk so the I would say that that portion was handled by other folk. Um, uh, I just drew out on the maps where sort of everything was going to be, and details on sort of what it was. Um, so I would I would put Sebelus on the map and then talked about what it was, and then design came up with sort of um, the block out of what they wanted, and then they would go to art and art would just implement it and uh they were awesome they they came up with a great tile set great texturing set for canark for that ancient you know uh jungle rune sort of feel yeah now the way it came together was just i mean near perfect first of all i love how intentional like when you're describing basically what you were shooting for and what you thought the game needed in terms of feel and like you know, the setup there, like that's, it, it's wonderful to hear that there was like that intent going into it. But you said, um, yeah, but I said that it was that, pulled from yeah. your D and D. What was that? I totally ripped off the intent because uh, I was a huge and still am a huge Robert E. Howard fan. So I'm much more, my, my fantasy taste is more sword and sorcery than it is, uh, high fantasy, if that makes sense. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. So Canark's more sword and sorcery because it's this dark fallen empire and it has snake people, right? And 
the Shishar and has uh, these uh, lizard men who are evil and enslave everybody. So I was going for that Robert E. Howard sword and sorcery sort of feel to it. I wanted it to be a little darker, a little grittier, a little bit more uh, foreboding, um, and maybe less high fantasy. So that's right. that's it wasn't all me. I was drawing from uh, author influences. Uh, but it did all come from my campaigns uh, that I had put together. It's an amalgam of probably two or three campaigns. And Venerable Sather was like one of the characters in my campaign. So, and you. you...